let's talk about de-influencing. I am someone who is definitely prone to a little bit of influence, or a lot, from social media, from the online world. I'm constantly being strayed or being tempted to veer into unnecessary purchases by things that I see that other people have or people that I follow and influences that I love. I feel it very necessary to protect myself. And the best way for me to not be influenced in too many ways, obviously you can't steer clear of everything. I'm not a miracle worker. But the best way for me to do that is to be super sure of my own personal style. This is a series of videos that I'm making where I'm talking about my journey to further finding my personal style. I feel like I've always had a good sense of my personal style and I've always worked in fashion and have enjoyed fashion and felt quite confident in it. But moving onto a boat and changing up my lifestyle a few years ago really led me to hone in on how I want to dress and the items I want to have in my wardrobe and how I want to add to my wardrobe and have it evolve through time. So how is it that I figured out what it is that I truly like? I looked at three areas to give myself a gauge to help me to know that I could use these pointers if I'm buying something, if I'm putting an outfit together, if I want to let something go. Just little checkpoints when I'm getting dressed to make sure that I'm feeling like my best self. I decided to really get clear on my past references, the things that made me love fashion when I was a teenager, going through my early 20s as a fashion student, when I was my most experimental, what are the things that I loved first and are those still showing up now? It's the number one way to be truly original because that is from you, that is your own personal experience. My favourite references from when I was growing up were 80s dance films, in particular Flashdance with Jennifer Veal, I love that movie so much, I just love 80s aesthetic. As much as I love them all, the main things that I draw from it is the shoulder pad. I am a lover of a shoulder pad these last few years as they've become a super trend. I'm like, yep, here for it. In my early 20s, I used to thrift in my local charity shops back in South Africa. I was always picking up floral 80s blouses with shoulder pads. I used to wear them with little cut-off denim shorts. It was fabulous. I love 80s proportions. The other reference is Sex and the City. When I was coming to the end of high school, I found it in about season five I think I just became obsessed that was really what led me to study fashion is just seeing Carrie Bradshaw's character and feeling overwhelmed by how amazing it was and the beautiful outfits that she wore she always showed up and she was always turned out whether you liked it or not and she had the sense of effortlessness as if things were just kind of thrown together so if ever I feel too perfect too on the nose too contrived or planned I think back to her and go can I throw on that's going to throw this off or what can I take off that's going to sort of dismantle this idea of perfection. I then look to bring something into my personal style that is a little bit aspirational, a little bit outside of my comfort zone, something that I've always wanted to perhaps dress like, a style that I've wanted to play with but that I haven't yet. The thing that I've been trying to bring into my style more and more is a beachy reference. Something that is influenced by the summer, by effortlessness, by the coast line. I love summer, hate everything else. I think the idea of effortless linen and just easy breezy casual style but elevated is really really cool. I love summer accessories so I've been trying to bring that into my looks all through the year in fact even in winter dressing with that sense of summer effortlessness beachy vibes. That's actually the best way that I can describe it. I'll show you some looks later. The third area that I looked at is what do I love wearing? What am I wearing on repeat? when I feel good. In last week's video I described to you how I'm analyzing my outfits. In looking at that, what makes me feel good now? And then how can I blend the past and the future me that I want to move towards into one? The key thing here is that it needs to relate to my lifestyle. Anyone can wear anything, but if it doesn't make sense and it doesn't make you feel comfortable and your best self in the setting that you're in, in your immediate environment, it's kind of pointless and borderline ridiculous. Being that I moved onto a boat a few years back and am still, I think, adjusting to this change in lifestyle, I sometimes think it is so strange that I find myself living on a boat, so strange being surrounded by water, but I really, really love it. So all that said, let me illustrate this for you, how I use these three areas when I'm putting looks together. I have a very simple lifestyle. I am essentially on the boat or at the office or on someone else's boat. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes I go out for drinks to a restaurant or we'll go for a walk. All I need is outfits for that. I don't really do much else. For the office, I work at a fashion company for a very well-known British designer. It's an anything goes kind of place. I have a creative job and so I like to look creative in it. Dressy, but then also casual to reflect who I am now and the lifestyle that I live. So here's an example of me wearing a casual trouser. This is a pair of Tibby joggers. I upcycle men's shirts and as much as I love making and selling them, I love wearing them. This is one of my own. It's the occasion shirt. I love the drama of the extended cuff. I paired this with a barely there sandal. This day in particular was a little bit chilly, so I love to layer over a vintage blazer. They work all year round. Being that they're vintage and secondhand, it brings a sense of effortlessness to a look that where maybe a blazer could be too dressed up, it never feels that way when it's a little bit oversized and from the menswear section. And of course, I've altered it a little bit. So it just feels very much like me. I then just finished off with a totem scarf. This is a great example of playing with proportion, playing with color, playing with neutral tones, but making sure that I feel dressed up and at the same time casual. When I walk back to the marina along the jetty, I don't feel out of place. I don't feel too dressed up. And I can take off the blazer, take off the shirt, kick off my shoes and curl up on the couch in my comfy joggers. I don't have to change. This is exactly how I love to dress. Another great outfit which illustrates my own personal style references perfectly was wearing a pair of men's silk pajama bottoms to the office. I lifted the casualness of the bottoms with a crisp men's white shirt. A men's dress shirt is the easiest way to amp up a casual look and always feel put together but still super comfortable and laid back. I wore this with a pair of very easy old leather sandals that I love. Altogether these elements worked really Really, really well. If I'm going out on the weekends to a friend's boat, this is something that I wore recently for a little tapas evening on my friend's boat. I decided to go with all black. These trousers are from Cars, but I found them for £10 in a charity shop and I've had them for three years now and I love them. I love wearing leather rope style sandals, minimal style sandals. They really work for the environment that I'm in now and the occasions that I need to dress for. There is a great loophole if you live on a boat on water in that you can wear a little bralette like the silk one that I'm wearing here and layer it up as if you're wearing a bikini top. It's got that effortless vibe, that summertime sensibility to it. If we decide, which we often do, that we're gonna nip to the pub. I would then button this up for a little bit more coverage. I just drape the shirt back a little bit off my shoulders, tuck it in. I can tuck in the trousers to my sandal as well if we're going for a walk and I don't want them to drag. And the look transforms a little bit to be a little bit more covered up. I love the way that you can really transform classic items and items with a lot of ease in them and really have them adapt depending on what you're doing throughout the day. I'm always checking in to make sure that my outfits are appropriate for my environment. All in all, this really works to keep me on track and helps me avoid making meaningless purchases and accumulating things that I don't need. I'm low on space in this boat that I live on. It's really important to me to slow down and also just get the most wear out of the things that I have in my wardrobe. It's always for me what it comes back to. I feel really great when I can view things online, view things on social media and follow my favorite influencers, but not feel like I need to have everything that they have. I need the things that work for my life, work for my lifestyle and the environment that I'm in. So I hope this video was inspiring in that way for you. If you enjoyed it, please do give this video a like, drop into the comments, let me know some of your favorite style references or if you've done any kind of analyzing your wardrobe in this way. I did do a video last week about how I analyze my outfits to discover how I feel most comfortable. So that along with having these three key points as a gauge for when I'm getting dressed, it works really well together to help me stay true to my own personal style. Do subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you can be notified for the next video. The next one is going to be all about a seasonless wardrobe and how I've built out a wardrobe that works for me from January through December. I'll see you soon for that one. Until then, bye.